Good morning. This is Eugene May. I am the teacher of Eagle Swings Ministries located in Dover, Dover, Florida. And I welcome you back to our teaching today. We're going to continue teaching on the subject of mountain movers. Last week we began this teaching by looking into Mark chapter 11, which is the major scripture that we are using for this particular teaching. And I welcome you to be with me today, and I just believe that God is going to bless you as we begin to speak to the mountains in our lives. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus leaves Bethany on the way to Jerusalem. As he is walking on the road, he's hungry, and he sees a fig tree, and he goes and he finds absolutely no fruit on the tree. And so he says to the tree, I curse you. You will never bear fruit again. And uh, the disciples heard that. And they went into Jerusalem, and on the way out of Jerusalem, they passed the fig tree again, and the disciples saw that this fig tree had been withered up. It had died. And, of course, it's not going to bear any more fruit ever in its life. And the disciples called Jesus' attention to this. We well, see, I believe all of this happened because Jesus wanted to teach his disciples a spiritual lesson. But it is a lesson that you and I need to also learn. In Mark eleven twenty two, Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. Literally, have the faith of God is what Jesus said. Sometimes I think our Bible translators don't want to translate it exactly the way that Jesus and others spoke things because they say this is impossible. Well, let me ask you a question. What kind of faith did God have? When God created this earth, what did he do? He spoke it into existence. He spoke his faith into existence. He spoke to the elements and told them to exist. And uh, God is looking for people like you and me who will emulate him. Now, then Jesus goes on to say, after he says, have the faith of God, he says, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, and I can see him stop, point maybe over his shoulder and say, you see that mountain there? If you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. Now, you see, God is talking about specific things to us. And so Jesus says, and I want to read this again, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. This is amazing. It's an amazing truth that God began to speak into our hearts nearly 50 years ago. We knew that this was in the scripture. I had read the scripture all of my life. I had been taught the scripture. But yet, we always explained this away as being impossible for man. This has to be possible only for God. But Jesus said... I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. I have made a choice. In fact, I made a choice back there 49 years ago, soon to be 50 years ago, that whatever problem it is in my life, whatever mountain exists in my life, I'm going to speak to it. Now, he says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And so here are 
spiritual principles that Jesus put into effect. Last week on our video, we talked about a few of these things. But I want to go back and say to you that we need to recognize that all of these spiritual principles that Jesus spoke are workable in our natural lives. The key is for us to work them, to use them, to be willing to speak to the mountain, to speak to the problem. And these mountains that are in your lives, and of course Jesus was speaking to a literal mountain, and, and I believe that what he says is true, that it could happen. But he is giving the principle of the mountains that we find in our lives, the problems, the difficulties, the fact that the fig tree had no figs on it. He is speaking to that, and I want you to understand that the mountains in your life are a challenge to God's power, not our power. They're a challenge to God's power. They're saying God can't do anything about it. But then we turn around and we speak exactly what God tells us to speak, what Jesus told us to speak, and we see that these principles come to pass and that the mountains are removed. Now, I want to ask you, <clears throat> are you a mountain mover? Or are you one that uh, just talks about the mountain? You see, if you're going to be a mountain mover, and we talked about this last week, you're going to have a right foundation. You're going to have faith in God, yes, but you're going to have the faith of God. If you're going to be a mountain mover, you're going to have to cooperate with God. Jesus said, whosoever says to this mountain, he's talking about the mountain that is in your life right now. He says, you say to this mountain, be removed. So what are we going to say? We are going to say what God says. Be removed. And so we're going to cooperate with God. We are the instruments that God wants to use to destroy the mountains. We are the instruments that he wants to use to move the mountains out of our lives. And so he does it with us speaking words of faith. You see, we are his instruments to bring the power of God against the mountains in our lives. Whatever the mountain is, whether it's sin, whether it's sickness, whether it's poverty, whether it's any other problem or difficulty that we could have, we cooperate with God and we speak to the mountain. One of the things that I said last week, and I think I need to say this again, and that is we speak to the problem, we don't speak about the problem. And I mentioned this in our teaching last week, that it often frustrates me whenever I hear people, uh, even in our church services sometimes, you give a person an opportunity to give a request or maybe even make a testimony uh, of what God is doing in their lives. And they spend minutes speaking about the problem. And oh, by the way, uh, I'm asking God to heal me. I'm asking God to do whatever. Where God wants us to begin to speak specifically to the mountain rather than just talk about the mountain. Now, mountain movers, and we learned this last week, speak specifically. What do I mean by that? Remember what Jesus said. He said, if you speak to this mountain, and I can see him again turning and speaking directly to the mountain. You see, vague words are useless words. Let me say that again. Vague words 
are useless words. When we just talk about things. No. God wants us to be specific. Your aim must be direct and intentional. Now, let's continue. We talked about all of that last week. But what about today? What about our teaching today? You see, I believe mountain movers expect a definite change. And they expect that definite change now. You say, well, things don't always happen immediately. Now, Jesus said, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, he's talking about us speaking specifically concerning something. Do we really expect the mountain to move? I do. I expect the mountain to move. I expect the disease to be moved. In 1996, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. Doctors did what they could do. I'm not opposed to allowing doctors to do what I physically cannot do in my life. And so I, the doctor did what he could do. And then he said, I'm sorry. That cancer spread through your whole body. That was not good news, I'll tell you. Well, that's not good news at all. But you know what we did? My wife and I, in fact, we didn't wait until the doctor gave us the evil report. We had already begun to do this. We had already spoken to the mountain. We had already said, cancer be removed. We had already spoken those words. And we were expecting it to be removed. Now, I encourage you to expect things to, things to happen right now. They don't always happen right now. Why? Because God shows us his faithfulness, and he shows us, even in times of waiting, that he is faithful. But also, while we are waiting, he's working on us. He's working on our attitudes. He's working on the things that need to be changed in us. I wish I didn't have to say that, but he does. He works on the things that need to be changed in us while we're waiting. But I expect an immediate change. I want God to do it, and I want him to do it right now. Now, back there in 1996 when I had that cancer, Yes, I had the cancer, but the cancer didn't have me. It didn't have my heart. It didn't have my words. We spoke to the mountain. We spoke to the cancer. We told it to be removed. Now, what happened? Within just a few weeks, the doctor said to me, we don't understand this but we can't find the cancer anymore. The cancer is removed. It's gone. And uh, finally they had to admit it was God, not us. Well, I want to tell you, God is a mountain mover, but he expects us to move the mountain. And whenever we speak to the mountain, we need to expect that, amount, that mountain to re be removed now. It may not disappear right now, but if we hold fast to our confession, as the Bible says, it will move. It will be removed from your life. I believe that. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 12, the writer is talking about things that are physical. And he says, therefore strengthen the hands that hang down and the feeble knees. 
and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather healed. We speak to the feeble knees, to the hands that are hanging down. That's a symbol of someone being dejected and feeling rejected. We speak to those and we make paths straight for our walking by our words as we speak to the feeble knees, as we speak to the things that need to be changed. And so mountain movers expect a definite change and they speak to it. Mountain movers also overcome the enemy called doubt. When we look back at the scripture, it says that if you believe and do not doubt in your heart, you'll have whatever you say. You see, doubt wants to come against us. It's interesting that we hear so many people say, well, I doubt that. I doubt that. I doubt that. We are a bunch of professional doubters in our generation because we have been told so often that either God does not exist or God does not move. God does, does not do what he used to do. I've heard people even say, well, this is not the day of Jesus. Jesus isn't here. Well, let me tell you, Jesus is here, and he's here in you and me if we will allow him to be. And that is because we have received him. We have received him into our hearts, into our lives, and he is very much in us, and he is alive in us. And he says that we are to do what he did. He says, I want you to speak to the mountain. And so the enemy of doubt comes and says, I doubt that. What does doubt do in the heart of man? Doubt brings confusion. Doubt brings every evil thing because we block the way for God to move. We block the way for our words to come to pass. Now God wants us to begin to say, okay God, I'm gonna take you at your word. What you say is going to be the rule of my life. And if you say I can speak to the mountain, I'm gonna to speak to the mountain. And I'm not going to doubt because, you see, doubt will defeat us. Now, if we dislodge the doubt in our lives, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're going to see the mountains removed. One of the greatest mistakes that I see people make is that they scrutinize themselves all the time. Always checking, well, did I do this right? Did I do that right? I want to ask you a question. In the situation that you're in right now, are you speaking what you believe? Are you speaking the Word of God? Are you speaking the things that God has put within your heart? If you are, stop scrutinizing it. Stop going back and saying, did I pray this right? Did I say this right? Say, I have believed God. I have taken my stand of faith and I am going to see the mountain removed in my life. You see, mountain movers believe that what they say will come to pass. That it will be done. That's 
what Jesus said. That if we believe and doubt not in our hearts, we are going to see everything that we have spoken come to pass and we're going to see it be done in our lives in this lifetime. Oftentimes I hear people say, well, so-and-so did not receive his healing in this lifetime, but he's in heaven healed. I I'm sure that's true. But oftentimes we say that even about ourselves. Well, if God doesn't do it in my lifetime, well, it'll, it'll get done when I go to heaven, when I go to be with him. What we're doing is we're speaking doubt. I know that not everybody's healed. But I don't go around and scrutinizing them either. I don't go around tr criticizing them and saying they didn't do this right and they didn't do that right and all of that. And I know that when we get to heaven, there's not going to be any tears in our eyes. There's not going to be any pains in our bodies. I believe that. But God is looking for people who will say in this life, I believe God, and I believe that I'm receiving what I say. I'm receiving his will in my life, and that I am being healed. I am being blessed. I'm being prospered. I'm being all of the things that are mountains in my life standing against me. I'm being those things in victory in my life. I am having my victory. Now, so mountain movers believe that what they say shall come to pass, and it does. Now, let's go a little further. Mountain movers prepare to possess in reality what they say. Remember the scripture says you will have whatever you say. Now that can be even on the negative side. I hear people say sometimes, well I'm afraid I'm going to have cancer. I'm afraid I'm going to have heart condition. I'm afraid I'm going to have high blood pressure. I'm afraid that I'm going to have and I'm afraid that I'm afraid and I'm afraid. It's amazing. And all of a sudden, what they were afraid of is what's coming about in their lives. That's what they're speaking. And in effect, it's like they curse themselves. God wants us to bless rather than curse. And so, mountain movers prepare to possess in reality the things that they say. So if I speak negative, <laughs> that's what's going to happen. But if I speak positively, if I speak the things that I believe are blessings for my life, then those are the things that I'm going to see. I want to take you into the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 just for a moment. In 1 Kings cha chapter 8 verse 56, there's a verse that speaks marvelous things to me. It says, There has not failed one word of all his good promise, which he promised through his servant Moses. Moses was the lawgiver. He was the one who had received the law. But in that law, there was not only laws against things. There were laws that were for things. And those were the things of blessing. And it says that not one word of what God had spoken through Moses had failed to come to pass. You see, this is something that we need to understand. If God says something, even if he uses 
Moses, or if he uses David, or if he uses Eugene, if it's God that speaks it, then it's going to come to pass. I believe that. And so God wants us to be prepared to possess in reality the things that we say. God says it, it comes to pass. But if we say what God says, it will also come to pass. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 20, one of my favorite verses of Scripture, it says, for all the promises of God in Him are yes. Not 50%, not 75%. Not even 99%. But it says, for all the promises of God in him are yes. If God has given a promise, he's going to do it. You know, I have three children. I say I. Sherry and I together have three children. One of the things that I tried to show my children was this, that if I said something, I was going to do it, that if I gave them a promise, I was going to keep it. And that is something that I wanted to do all of my life, is to keep my promises to my children. We're the children of God. Do you think I'm any better than God? Absolutely not. There have been times that I could not keep a promise and I had to apologize to my children. But God keeps his promises for not 50%, not 75%, not 99%, but 100% of the promises of God are yes. And it goes on in that scripture to say, and Amen, that means our amen is to the glory of God the Father. When we say amen to the promises of God, what we are doing is saying, I agree with God. And the Bible teaches that if any two of us upon this earth shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of the Father which is in heaven. And so, those promises are yes, and we agree and God does it. Now, one more scripture before we close this teaching today. In Psalm 89, verse 34, God is speaking and he says, My covenant I will not break, nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips. You and I, if we are believers in Jesus Christ, you and I are in covenant with God. That means that God has made an agreement with us. And that agreement is that everything that we need is going to be supplied by our God. And God wants you today to realize that God spoke and he spoke to the psalmist. But he also spoke to us. And he says, my covenant I will not break nor will I alter the word that has gone out of my lips. When Jesus spoke in Mark 11, 22 through 24, when he spoke in the whole of the New Testament, whatever he said, God will not alter. If Jesus spoke a principle of faith, God will not alter it. God wants you to understand that whatever he has spoken, whatever his son Jesus has spoken, that's what he's going to do. So I want to encourage you. Take the word of God, the word that you have read from the scripture, the words that you have heard from folks like me, Take that word, if it's true, and speak it and watch the mountains be removed because God is wanting you to be a mountain mover in this world. 
Father, I thank you for this teaching. I thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us today as we've taught this word, that people are beginning to grasp that truth and they're grasping it thoroughly, not doubting one phase of it. And they believe that what they say will move mountains. And Lord, I thank you today that the mountains are being removed out of my life and the lives of every person watching and listening to this video today. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to help us with our ministry, you can go to PayPal at Eugene May at eugenemay.org and uh, you can help us with this. But other than that, my prayer for you is that you be blessed extremely in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you in our next video.